Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem out the number of consistent strings. So I'm not going to lie, this is a very, very boring problem, but I'll try to make it a bit more interesting. We're going to go over the relatively simple, like trivial solution. Well, I'm actually not even going to go over the brute force solution. I'll try to like just go through it with like words just in case there are like beginners watching this. But then I'm going to go over pretty much like the optimal solution with a hash set and the more interesting solution I think if you're a beginner or even if you're familiar with this solution you'll be interested to see the bit mask solution if you haven't heard of this this is something that comes up in more difficult problems so worth learning when we can apply it now that we have a chance to apply it to a relatively easy problem let's get into it very very simple problem the idea is we're given a list of characters which at most is going to contain 26 distinct characters. In fact, I think just the total number of characters is going to be at most 26. And I think the limit is from lowercase a through z. So it's only going to contain characters within this set. We have a list of words that I believe will also only contain a characters in that set. And for each word, we just want to know, does that word only have characters that are also found in that string? That string is called the allowed character. So these are the characters we're allowed to use. And we want to know how many of these words can we form pretty much with these characters. You look at the first word, can't do it. We have the A, it's in the allowed string, but we don't have the D, so we can't form this word. There's a joke somewhere in there, but I think I'll avoid it for now. Same thing with this word, can't make it. This word we can, we can use three occurrences of lowercase a and then B. Same thing with this one, but not this one. So only two words we return to. Now, the obvious solution would be nested loops. For every word, we're going to go through every character in that word. And then we're just going to make sure that that character was in this string. So that itself is also going to be like a 26 operation, but technically that's constant. I mean, that's a relatively small string. So this is the brute force solution. Really, the time complexity comes from the size of the second parameter. I mean, we could factor this into the time complexity, but again, I think it's constant. It really doesn't matter. Let's say there are N words in this and there are M characters in each word. This is roughly what you could say the time complexity is. And honestly, doing this brute force, I'm calling it a brute force, but it's just as efficient as the hash set solution I'm about to show you. Now you might think, well, this solution has constant memory. We're not using any data structures. With a hash set, we might have extra memory. Well, technically it's also gonna be up to 26 characters in that hash set. So, I mean, I guess it costs memory, but I don't know. I mean, at this scale, it really doesn't matter what solution we implement. So the hash set solution is basically, instead of looking up within the string, we can convert this into a hash set and then do the lookup there. So we're replacing an operation that usually would cost this and replacing it with this. Now, in terms of big O, obviously these are equivalent, but this is slightly more efficient, I guess. If you don't know what a hash set is, by the way, you could probably check out neatcode.io. There's a ton of resources on there. So as I mentioned, we're going to take that allowed string and convert it into a hash set just like that. In Python, we can change one data type into another data type with the same variable. In other languages, you probably have to create a new variable for this. And then we're just going to go through every word in the input words. We want to count how many of them are valid. So we want to determine if this word is valid. So we can say for character in the word, and if this character is in the allowed hash set, what would we wanna do? Well, if we're keeping track of the result, which is like the number of valid strings, and that's what we're gonna return down here, in here, what should we do? Well, here we don't necessarily wanna increment it because we wanna know that all the characters in the word are valid. So honestly, in my opinion, it's easier to code it up the opposite way. When in doubt, invert the problem. Let's try to assume that all the words are valid like this. Just get the length of the words and assign it to this. But if we find a character that in that word is not in the allowed hash set, do this. If not that, then decrement the count and then break out of the loop because we don't want to decrement the count multiple times for the same word. So by breaking here, we're terminating this loop out there. So pretty elegant solution. Let's run it. As you can see, it works. Can't really do any better than that. But let's learn about bit masks. Given that the constraints are so small that we're only dealing with 26 characters, like that's our character set, we could actually use a single 32-bit integer. Now, in Python, it doesn't really matter, but most languages have 32-bit integers. The reason for that is because we'll have 32 bits set, 
and each of them will be a zero. Not each of them will be a zero, but like imagine we have 32 bits, right? Each of the bits can correspond to a character. So since we have 26 characters, that's enough. We'll have six bits left over. We won't use those. So let's say the zeroth bit here, this bit corresponds to A. This bit corresponds to B. So we sort of have a mapping, a bit for every single character. Whoops. And so what we can now do is take the allowed string and then convert it into something called a bit mask. That's basically just usually an integer or some binary representation that represents something else. So see how we kind of have like an implicit mapping. We're mapping a bit to a particular character. So what we're going to do is go through the input string here. A. We want A to correspond to this bit. So if this string has an A, we want in our bit mask this to be set to 1. How do we do it? First, we're going to map A to 0. We're going to map B to 1. We're going to map C to 2, etc., etc. How do you do that? It's pretty easy using something called ASCII values. Every character has an actual binary representation. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but let's say lowercase a corresponds to something like 55. And then lowercase b will correspond to 56. This will be 57, et cetera, et cetera. It'll be in increasing order. So there is usually a built-in function to get the ASCII value of a particular character. And so the way that we could do this mapping is by taking whatever the character we have. Um, in Python, it's going to be the ORD function. So take the ORD of the character, let's say it's X, subtract from it the ASCII value of the actual character itself, lowercase a. Because that way, if the character we're looking at is a, then that minus itself is going to be zero. If that character is b, that character minus a is going to be one because a is 55, b is 56. This will give us that mapping. So that's just the ASCII value part. So assuming we have this mapping, this is the first step. The second step will be then to set that bit. That's also relatively easy. It's similar to yesterday's video where we do the uh, bitwise and. So what we want is to have a number for A, we want this number. For B, we would want uh, this number in binary. So essentially, this is telling us which bit is going to be set in this number. And so if it's A, then we do the bitwise and, and then that'll end up setting the bit in our bit mask. So you could have done it with C, for example. If C is going to be set, that would be this bit. And then we do the bitwise and. The way we'll be able to set this here is just by taking uh, the value 1, which looks like this in binary, and then shifting it to the left, taking that 1 bit, shifting it to the left by this value, whatever that character mapped to. So for A, we'll shift it to the left by zero. So we basically have what we want. If it was B, we'd shift it to the left by one. We'd get something like uh, 0010. And for C, it would be set over here. So I hope that makes sense and how the bit mask is going to look. So for this example, A, B, the bit mask would look uh, like this, like we'd have the one set here and the one set here. And then the last step is just going to be going through all of the words. Then for each word, we're going to go through all the characters. And then for each character, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a lookup the same way we did with the hash set. Technically, it's going to be a constant time lookup. So it's in terms of big O time complexity, just as efficient as the hash set solution. But we're technically saving a bit of space just by having one integer. And in terms of how that lookup is going to be implemented, it's going to be very similar. So we're going to take a character, suppose it was D, we'd then map it to the value. So A was zero. I think D would end up mapping to three. Then we'd take three, uh, shift it to the left. Well, we'd take one and then shift it to the left by three. We would get something like this, one, zero, zero, zero. And then we'd take this number and stack it, let's say, on top of this. I'll, I'll put it actually at the bottom. So we have one, zero, zero, zero. So just to make it more clear, I'm actually going to redraw this. Suppose this is our bit mask is the same that's over here. So it's basically saying these are the characters that are actually allowed. We're looking for D. We want to know is D allowed. This is the position that it's set in. So we get the number that looks like this. So we want to know are both values in this particular position one? Because if they are, then D is allowed. And if they're not both one, then it's not allowed. So what do you think we're going to do? Bitwise and. And that just makes me realize, I think earlier, actually, when we were setting these bits, we should have done bitwise or. I'm really sorry about that. I think it'll probably make more sense in the code anyway, so I apologize again. Uh, but in this position, again, we just want to know if both of them are one. 
And we're not going to set the bit mask. We're not going to update the bit mask. We're not going to update this variable. We just want to know if both of these are one. The rest of these are guaranteed to be zero because given that we're taking a character and then just setting one bit, like D corresponds to this bit, and we're just setting that one, the rest of these here will be zero. Everything before it will be zero. Those can be ignored. And then bitwise anding these two uh, in the output, that's going to give us a zero. And the rest of these are zero as well. So therefore, this one is not allowed. And therefore, we could once again decrement our result. And so now let's code this one up. So two steps to this. One is building the bit mask, and next is actually uh, using it. So initially, let's just set this to zero. Let's go through every character in allowed, and then let's set an individual bit for that character. So remember, the first thing we want to do is map this character to a value from zero through 25 because we have 26 characters and A starts at zero. So we take that character and subtract from it the ASCII value of lowercase a. So this is guaranteed that this will be zero through 25. And then we want to take one and shift it to the left by this amount. So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses, one, shift it to the left by this many times. And so that tells us which bit we're looking at. And then we want to set that bit in the bit mask. And to do that, we're going to do bitwise or. So this or the bit. And just as an example, that would look something like this. If this is our bit mask and the character that we're setting is lowercase a, when you bitwise or these, like maybe that bit is already set or maybe it's not. Either way, only one of them needs to be one. And since everything else in this bit is going to be zero, that bit is going to end up being set because um, we're setting the result to the bitwise or of these two. So the result will look like this. And then if we were to try to set a different bit here, we would once again bitwise or maybe we're setting this one bitwise or these two together, we would get the result of zero, one, zero, one. None of the bits from this and none of the bits from this will be lost when we update the result. Now we're going to have our result. It's once again going to be initialized to the length of the words and we will decrement it as we go. So for word in the list of words for character in that word for that character, we want to figure out like which bit it is. So therefore, we can actually just copy and paste this. So I'm going to copy and paste that. Now we've mapped that character to the appropriate uh, number and then mapped it to the appropriate bit and then we're going to bitwise and the bit and the bit mask. If the result of this is zero, therefore that bit does not exist in the bit mask and thus we have to decrement the result and we might as well break out of this loop too. I mean, we kind of have to break out of the loop so that we don't end up decrementing the result multiple times for the same word. Lastly, down here, just go ahead and return the result. Let me run it. I'm stupid, bad name. This should have had an underscore just like that one. Let's try that again. There we go. And this one you can actually see is technically less efficient. You can imagine why, because we're operating on such small constraints anyway, and adding all this overhead of like the bit manipulation is really not worth it. But anyways, I think this is still worth knowing. And I find it kind of interesting, to be honest. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.